What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back from another episode of Poker Hands. Today we're going to be breaking down a large pot that Phil Hellmuth recently played over on Live at the Bike. A hearty pot and some vintage Phil Hellmuth wine to wash down our meal with. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. Eric Hicks with Ace King of Diamonds. That's the type of hand I want to spend my Valentine's Day night with. If my wife is busy, of course. And Hellmuth has kings and this is going to get spicy. And Berkey with 8-6 of diamonds putting in the cold 3-bet. And there goes Eric with ace-king of diamonds. He's loving his hand. And Phil's got kings. There and he go. just calls. I don't know. Wow. I don't either. You're watching the same thing I Berkey's yeah. getting a decent <laughs> price to crack these guys, but he's not super deep. I wonder if he's... Yeah, he's just going to fold. And the big boys are going to go at it. Mad genius versus Helmuth. No, no, no. Our hand begins at 100-200 with a $200 ante and Eric Hicks limping in under the gun with ace-king suited. Typically speaking, I would advocate to only have raises here in your early position with, your, with any hand you want to play. But I know some players like to have a limping strategy. If you do have a limping strategy, I would say make sure and mix in some good hands like this one as well as some of your weaker stuff as well. The action then folds to Phil Helmuth in the hijack who looks down at pocket kings. Definitely a hand you're going to want to be raising. And he makes it big. 2,000 to go here. I would advocate for a smaller raise size. Something like 900 to 1,000 looks good to me. But maybe he's seamed up. He's got a good image to get paid. People want to play pots for them. Maybe this is going to work if you're Phil Helmuth. Anyway, the action folds around to Matt Birkin. <laughs> I just cannot get away from this guy. Jesus. Was this on purpose? Did the editing team put him in here? What? Anyway, Matt Berkey, thinking that Phil Helmuth's 10 big blind isolation raise is weak, decides to go ahead and 3-bet small out of position here with the 8-6 of diamonds, a seasoned veteran move. Eric Hicks now, back the action on him. This is the kind of situation that you really want to have develop when you do have a monster under the gun limp. He just makes it 20,000 to go. This is a huge 4-bet. You're putting in 100 big blinds here pre-flop. So this pot is getting going. Now back over to Phil Helmuth with the pocket kings. I think this is a pretty good time to slow the action down. In fact, you might advocate to have no re-raises at this point. Simply put, you have $240,000 effective to start this hand. That's going to be too many blinds to put in anything other than aces. Even the bluffs are not going to be particularly good. So I think just calling here with all of our hands makes some sense. Over to Matt Berkey, and he does get out of the way with his 8-6 suited. So certainly a good fold there from Matt, and let's go ahead and take a flop. But before we get going here, I want to let you guys know that on May 11th, the Lodge Championship Series will have its flagship event, the main event with a $2 million guarantee and a $3,000 buy-in. Last year, the event was won by Alan Bauer, who won $375,000 while putting an eye drops and bluffing a guy off of aces in a four-bet pot. We also did not hit this guarantee last year and overlaid a few hundred thousand dollars that the Lodge put up on the house. So, definitely some value to be had here. Stop on by the Lodge and play in our main event. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the action. <sighs> And Mad Genius flops the nuts. And Helmuth's got an overpair. This is not going to end well for him. Mad Genius just thinking, how much can I get from this is guy? Counting business in, in the closet? 20. Where? 20 he bets 20. <laughs> Phil's not going anywhere. I need you. Hmm? He's not loving life, he's honestly, business. but he's not folding. Oh. Two kings. <laughs> the flop comes 10 9 3, all diamonds. Eric Hicks flops a flush, has the nuts. In fact, Berkey would have also flopped a flush. I don't know how many diamonds we got in the deck today, but it seems like a lot of them. Regardless, Helmuth through the overpair and Eric Hicks now with the nut flush. $46,000 in the pot. Eric decides to go ahead and bet the flop, making it 20K to go. I'd like to see a little smaller bet here from Eric. Maybe something more like 10 or 15K on, the, on a board like this. If your opponent doesn't have a diamond, it's kind of hard for them to continue. I'm also going to note that Eric's hand likes to trap flop quite often because when you have the ace and the king of diamonds, it's way less likely your opponent now has a flush. These types of hands tend to trap. If you have a hand like ace five of diamonds, you're much more likely to bet um, because you unblock all of the diamonds your opponent can have. 
It's also totally reasonable here to bet quite frequently because when you four bet this size, you should have many strong hands, not that many bluffs. I just feel like the size is a bit too big. With kings here, things are actually already getting pretty dicey for Helmuth. I mean, I think you're probably going to have to go ahead and call the flop, but you're pretty unhappy about it. You can have all your overbears that have a diamond. You could have some flushes here on the flop. You could have flopped a set with tens or nines potentially when you're this deep. So there are a lot of hands Helmuth can have that are still quite strong. Uh, Kings is now shifted massively towards the weaker part of his range when he doesn't have the diamond. All those things said, Eric could have queens. He could have jacks. He could have ace king. Uh, he, he could, yeah, just have like a one diamond hand, although it's not too likely. Uh, he could just be c betting. So I think in this situation, you have to just peel one off here in position, but you're definitely not thrilled about it. Helmuth does decide to make the call, and this pot's already eighty-five, eighty-six thousand dollars going into the turn. With still a couple hundred thousand behind, let's go ahead and see the turn. You know, and the you turn know. is an eight. Mm -hmm. Phil's gonna stay around here, mm -hmm. unless something crazy happens. Yeah, yeah, Mad yeah, Genius yeah. is just wondering, how much can I get from this guy? Yeah. That's like nice and convenient for you. Well, that was the Holy 50. shit, that's like huge. 50 ball. 50, My husband almost uh, opened his law firm down there, but he thought maybe people- And Helmuth is just getting down, chopped down like a yeah. it's Beverly tree in the olden like days. Oh, you know, he, like, I can't see him there. folding to this bet. So, Eric's um, been pretty we, crazy. We got queens. Right. And we, we got, we got like he could have that's queens. Cool. He could just have an yeah, yeah. ace king with a yeah, diamond. Yeah. He could have a lot of hands. It's actually really, really convenient. That's really I can't see Phil folding the kings here. He's going to want to at least see a river in position. What if I have two red aces? Is that good? Yeah, Phil's in there. He's not going anywhere. And if this river is a brick, it's the biggest pot I've played in a long time. It's a big pot. Already almost two hundred thousand in there. The turn comes an offsuit eight, which is essentially a brick. I mean, queen jack suit has made a straight, but most hands haven't changed, and the nuts is still exactly the same. Eric decides to keep applying the pressure, and he bets fifty thousand dollars again. Don't mind betting here, and I think it's totally fine to bet here, but I wouldn't mind seeing this kind of hand trap on the turn as well. Um, anyway, best two-thirds spot, 50, 50K and about 85K here. Uh, I do like the sizing that is good. It sets up for like a river jam. I would may maybe slightly bigger 60K here, set up a kind of geometric river size jam, but regardless, this seems fine. Over to Phil Helmuth. Look, guys, it's tough out there. I, you got the Kings. Shit's getting bad. You're stuck. People are playing back at you. But at the same time, we're getting into terrible, terrible, terrible territory. Our opponent has bet flop, bet turn. So if he had aces, he would probably be taking this line. He could have a flush. He could have, if he was bluffing with something like queen suited, that got there. If he has the ace of diamonds, he still has a bunch of equity against you. And you're stone dead versus the value range. I'm not a big advocate for folding kings in the lost spots, but we're looking at a 250 big blind turn bet. This hand is just straight up a fold. There's really no way around it. There's nothing else to say. There's no analysis to be had. So Phil does go ahead and makes the call, and let's take a river. Before we do, though, I like how this video has Eric breaking down the hand. He's scared. He's scared because he's only got kings. He doesn't have aces, so he doesn't have the nuts. So he's just going to flat call. That's a mistake. I was drinking wine the whole time. Everybody saw me. I believe it. Anyway, let's go ahead and take the river. And the river's another diamond, and this is going to save Phil. This is the lifeline he leaned in. He's not going to be happy. He's going to be in mega tilt. He thinks he just got sucked out on. Meanwhile, he just got saved. $156,000 that he probably would have lost if this was... Is Eric, Eric looking at Eric check, but no, he's just thinking about it. 50,000. 50, and he bets 50 again, and oh man, he's just trying to milk him, but Helmuth can't beat anything now. And he knows it. Oh my god, nothing. The river comes the four of diamonds, a card where now the bluffs have gotten there as well. And Eric decided to bet 50K, something like 30, 28, 30% pot. Very small bet in the river. These spots are also brutal. The pot is huge. You obviously want to win it. A lot of money out there. And your opponent bets a price that looks a little too good to be true. Once again, in Eric's shoes, I don't mind checking. I know I'm a bit of a broken record with that at this point. Because if you check and your opponent has a hand with no diamond, they might be tempted to turn it into a bluff and try and get you off a hand like aces with no diamond. Or maybe something like a middling diamond. But regardless... 
Betting is also fine too. In a lot of these flush situations, your good flushes can do some of both things. Anyway, so Eric decides to go over 50K bet, just a small bet here on the river. I I'd prefer either a big bet or a check, actually. Uh, I think if you have a good hand, you want to bet big. Uh, and if you have a or a bluff, you want to bet big. And if you have a hand like Queens of the Diamond, I don't think you really want to bet. I think you want to check. So I don't think this hand, this this bet size makes all too much sense. Although when you have the two strong diamonds, it, it makes a little bit more sense. I still think I'd rather go big or check. Over to Phil now with the pocket kings. Disaster. Everything's gotten there. It's hard to imagine uh, why you would be good. So I think this is one of those spots where because the price is very attractive, you might, might talk yourself into it. But he th I think Phil knows that he should probably lay this down. But maybe he's a little stuck or a little tilted or a little steamed up. Hard to say. In this spot, you should probably be folding. But Phil just doesn't quite find a way to get away. He's sure he just got sucked out on. Oh. Oh my God. And he calls. Oh, my wow. God. He pays it off. Two. The mad genius I with the perfect the river sizing. Ow. Gets a 50 ball out of Helmuth on the Diamond River. Oh. This guy is incredible. And Helmuth is done. He's wow. done. Uh, if I can't trap the crazy guy with ace king versus aces, I guess I'll just quit. He's out of the game. A half an hour walk, comes back and loses a massive yeah. pot to the mad yeah. genius. And whew. I was so mad when I saw that flush. I was dead to one out. And Berkey would have had a smaller flush. I was unlucky on the river. Very unlucky. <laughs> and mad genius is right. <laughs> that river cost him about 100000 Sorry, buddy. You sure, Phil? The only way to get out of a hole is to keep digging. <laughs> <laughs> and Robbie with the perfect needle. What the fuck, man? What is wrong with you? Come on, Phil. Oh, Helmuth is gone. Can I lose a big pot and quit? Man's got a decent I point. I agree with Robbie. No? Right? You gotta find oil or water. Keep digging. <laughs> Robbie, just keep going. Tell me if he keeps coming back to the table. I think he might have forgot his phone charger or something, but the, they're going to need to turn the AC on because it is real steamy in there. Is, is Helmuth going to play another hand or is he just picking up? I'll tell you what, not the best week in L.A. for Phil. Can't believe he's leaving. This is the worst loss I've had. Uh, this might be a record for him. 200? Second worst loss I've had in 15 years. Wow, you heard it first. Handling it well. There he goes. Phil, he's Phil, gone. You Phil, you want it. <laughs> Needles keep coming. A 25 chip. Give it to the oh, dealer. Only a second stream game. <laughs> the bike capturing Phil on his way out the door. Really make sure you get him as he heads out of the out of the casino. We want every moment of Phil leaving. Also, Phil says trapping aces versus ace king. Did he forget he has kings here? I feel like. That comment insinuates he had aces, but he pretty clearly just had kings. What if I have ever. two red aces? Is that good? If I can't trap the crazy guy with ace king versus aces. Last note here, Robbie with the only way to get out is to keep digging comment. Pretty pretty good stuff there. Pretty funny comment from Robbie on the way out the door. That's going to be it for us here at Polker News. Thank you for joining us. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, guys. I see a lot of new viewers on the channel in the last month. Support the team and hit that sub button and join the Doug Polk Poker channel. Appreciate it, guys. I will see you again. Seems like tomorrow. Oh, is the camera off? Yeah, I'm leaving the video.